Hello guys, what is going on? As promised, here is my update video for the Cabalist in Grim Dawn Ashes of Malmoth. So before I go too far into this build, I feel like there was a little bit of misunderstanding and miscommunication in my last video, but if you haven't checked out my last video, please go look at that video. It has a lot of good information, but I just want you guys to keep in mind that I am learning just like everybody else is when a game's new and when things are coming out and things are changing, and obviously my build is going to be subject to change based off what gear I find or what's needed in that situation or circumstance. So these builds are going to change around a little bit and this build in fact has changed around a little bit and I think some people kind of got the idea that I was saying that Conjurer was much better than Cabalist like period. That was not the case. What I was simply trying to say is that Conjurer is a safer pick and in that aspect it's stronger in the realm of survivability and if you're gonna play a hardcore character and you like summoners I would definitely suggest the Conjurer still. I think that Conjurer is a lot more durable compared to the Cabalus so far that I've seen. So, you know, there might be gear in the future that makes this character pretty beefy or tanky, but I mean, my Conjurer is really, really beefy and pets never die, I never die, and I can fight just about anything, tank any Nemesis boss, so that's kind of what I was saying in that aspect. On the flip side, Cabalus is insanely good at doing damage. AoE, single target, this character just rips things to shreds. It's insane how fast things die with this character. <laughs> but I didn't by any means mean to say that the skeletons are terrible and that they just die in every situation because they don't. But there are certain situations where the skeletons die no matter what you do, which is what I was trying to say. And just to give you a few examples, Darius Cronley is one of those examples. For some reason, he just murders the skeletons. Not sure why. I've even stacked Aether Resistance as high as it can go, Bleed, Chaos, everything, and I've tried to fight these bosses and these situations, and they still just drop my skeletons. And, you know, you have to kite and fight a little bit with this build sometimes, and it's not all the time, it's not like a crazy amount of the time, but, you know, for example, the Nemesis Beast out in Ugdingbog, same concept, I can max bleed resist as high as I can, and it helps, I mean, I can say they probably survive a little better, but if your skeletons are standing there and that bleed pulls there and the nemesis boss is like beating on your skeletons, they're gonna die. Like you have to move them, you can't just let them take all the brunt force of damage like you can with the conjurer. So I just wanted to get that cleared up. I still think both builds are extremely strong. I love any summoner build to be honest. It's just what I've always liked to do in any ARPG that I've played. So let's get into the skills. I'll go over the items briefly. Some of the items have changed, and I'll go over Devotion, which I think I have changed since my last video. And before I get picked apart for my Devotion, uh, I just want you guys to know that my Devotion, everything really, is not set in stone. I'm just basically picking up things that I need and taking things out that I don't need based on what I'm getting. So if I find an item, just as an example, that gives me like, you know, 50% bleed resist, and it pushes my bleed resist to like 60% over cap and I had a devotion that was giving me like 30% bleed resist you know I'll drop that because I don't need it anymore just as an example you know it doesn't have to be like specific exact detail but anyway so uh, I did max out the skeletons like I said before and I definitely think you should max these as much as you can you know they're gonna be your primary damage dealers and that's the thing about this build is it is a summoner build but it's kind of not at the same time I mean it definitely is I know that sounds weird but a lot of the damage is coming from that flame torrent it's crazy how much damage that thing does and if the conjurer had a pet it could summon multiple of that you could link the flame torrent to as well that would be the ultimate pet build in my opinion because you just would never die and everything would die really fast <laughs> but like I said they may nerf this, I'm not sure. While it still lasts, we because it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Alright, so Undead Legion. Now, I had somebody mention to me that they were like, hey man, you need to max this even higher. Like, get those skeletons out. And I was like, no, I get it. But even if I max it right now with the gear that I have, I still only get plus 5 summon limits. So, it doesn't do me any good. But if you can, if you have pluses of skill to this from gear, which I hope to find sometime, yeah, definitely put this to wherever you, you need to to get that extra skeleton. But, like I said before, if it's going to be like, you know, right now I can push it to 15, but I think you need 16 for plus 6 summon limit. Absolutely no reason to do that. You're just wasting points. 12 out of 12 on Rule of the Crypt. Not a bad skill, like I said before. A little bit extra damage for your skeletons. Some vitality damage conversion. Armor. Vitality resistance for your skeletons, which is not bad. They need it. So Bone Harvest 1 point, Soul Harvest 1 point. I'm still kind of up in the air about this. I kind of want to mess around and play test with this more. 
the flat vitality damage increase on this I think could be something pretty good and special if you could uh, do some damage testing and numbers and see where you, what you could do with this but uh, one point for now just because why not it's a little bit extra damage for vets bone harvest at one point this is going to proc the shepherd's call which is really nice super super good buff huge crit damage and stuff for your pets I love it um, I noticed the other day this ability here the main hand damage on this is really high like absurdly high compared to most skills uh, so you could technically level this up more if you wanted to to have a decent little AoE nuke but that's entirely up to you special binding still one point still kind of meh about the skill wish it was a party buff but it is extra health a little bit extra damage stats and stuff it's, yeah, it's okay summon blight fiend okay so here's where this build did change a lot I dropped all of my other pets that are not skeletons down to base rank one and then everything you see this is plus the skill so this is that one it's getting plus three right now the reason I did this is because I was really curious because I saw people talking about it in forums and stuff they were like yeah you know just drop it down one you don't need it any higher than that and I was kind of afraid because I was thinking man these pets are gonna die a lot you know because their health obviously is lower and stuff but oddly enough they survive pretty well and I'm okay with that <laughs> because there are a lot of other stats that I think that are more important that I wanted to put points into and that's exactly what ended up happening so one point here is probably just fine now the rotting fumes I did mention before I wanted to see if I could somehow pump this even higher which I ended up doing and it's insanely good as you know the defensive ability reduction is huge on this and that's just gonna make you crush and demolish pretty much anything that's weak is gonna just be even more weak and then anything that was kind of tanky or harder to fight is gonna obviously be affected by this drastically blight burst still one point I still stand by this super good skill really decent damage for one point and the AOE Nova does a really good CC so definitely worth taking 10 out of 10 on call of the grave had some people tell me that they would only put one point to this I disagree you get that huge crit damage bonus and then the health regeneration is really important on this I think too for your pets all the other stats are you know they're static they're okay they're not bad but I really feel like that the health regen and the crit damage are huge on this and then the all damage is not bad at all the scaling on this is actually really good even past 10 so I've even considered pumping this even higher we'll see mark of torment I still like this skill this is personal preference probably but there's been some situations where I'm fighting the ethereal spin me in a corner because um, I'm an idiot and I get out of position <laughs> and then like a giant ethereal starts punching me in the face throw this on him and it saves me and I, I like that so <laughs> I like to use that 12 out of 12 on Master of Death. Again, the scaling past 12 on this is terrible. I wouldn't go any higher than that. On Occultist side, I did end up putting Curse of Velty at 4, and that was more so for the proc on their radius area to be a little larger. 5.3 meter radius right now, which is really nice. The movement speed reduction is kind of good too, but uh, mostly for the radius you know, increase on that. That's why I did that. Vulnerability, one point. Again, dropping defensive ability, and as I mentioned before, reducing enemies' resistances. So it gives you more damage for your pets. That's actually a pretty good damage increase for your skeletons, so I definitely max that. One point is summon familiar. Max out storm spirit. And I had it at 11 last time I made my video, but definitely want to max this out. That is huge damage increase for you and your party and your pets, as well as all resists. So that's really, really good. 16 out of 16, blood of Dreek. As always, really good skill. I believe this is probably one of the most important skills for a pet build. You're getting that huge health restore, you're getting the health regeneration, and then the offensive ability. Really, really good. Went 4 to 12 in Aspect of the Guardian. Now, I had somebody mention to me that I need to pump that higher because it'll make your pets survive because of the phys physical resistance. I tried it. Nope. Still in those situations that I mentioned earlier, skeletons are still going to die. So, um,. I'm basically using this just to push my poison acid resistance to cap, and that's because I switched my boots, which had poison acid resist. I don't think that it's bad to have the physical resistance by any means. I'm just simply saying that I tried it. It didn't make a huge difference. One point in a Hellhound, as I mentioned before, and don't forget to use that Blazing Death. I did drop Doombolt, because with how much damage this build does, you typically don't really need Doombolt, as I found out, if you position your pets and everything right. I was playing one day and I was like, man, I wish I could have all melee skeletons to proc the flame torrent. And then I kind of realized, maybe I can just pet command and make them run up to something and then make them attack. And it worked. It works beautifully. Because even if they're ranged, as long as they're standing next to a target, they will demolish it. And I'll show you that here in a bit. Hellfire, max this. Super good. Fire, chaos, damage increase. Insanely good. Flat chaos damage. 
little bit of fire retaliation. But this is going to synergize super well with this build with your Flame Torn proc. Definitely want that. One point in Bonds Abysmal, max out manipulation. Definitely got to do that. All right, so I'll go over the gear. I'll highlight it. Um, I'll go, I'll go kind of quick. Anything that's different or changed, I'll stop and talk about. So this is the same. That's the same. Do take note of the component components I'm using too. Um, I had somebody ask me about elite, and they're dying, and they are not sure why. And I looked at their character sheet and stats. I noticed they didn't have any components in the character to boost the resistances. So resistances in this game are really important, guys. You don't want to ignore that. And it's what I tell everybody in any RPG or RPG in general. Your effective DPS is zero if you're dead. So having some survivability and tankiness is just as good as DPS, and you want to find a good balance. So definitely look for that. So this, as I mentioned before, is pretty cool when you get hit. Procs that bonus all pets to give them flat chaos. Huge all damage total speed. Um, with the Hellfire being pushed up even higher on the Hellhound, this is even more valuable in my opinion. So this right here is one of the things that changed. This metal is phenomenal in my opinion, and it's really good for this class because one of the hardest resistances to stack for the Cabalus is Pierce Resistance. So I'll kind of break this down and explain why I think it's really good. Obviously you get the all damage for yourself, health, Pierce. I rolled 3% Aether Resistance on that from the Homestead Blacksmith. So if you haven't noticed the Blacksmith, that you find in the game, each one of them does something special or unique, and you can actually hover over the icon when you talk to the blacksmith. There's a little icon at the bottom of his uh, little menu, and it'll tell you what he does. So that blacksmith had a chance to roll Aether Resistance for me when I crafted this item. So I crafted this, got the bonus Aether, which was really nice. So that's where I got that from, okay. Um, obviously, 30% elements resist, max pierce resist, Ember Call is kind of useless, don't worry about it. But the bonus all pets here is insanely good. You get 41% to all damage, 10% chance of 92 reduced target's defensive ability for 3 seconds. So that's going to stack with your Curse of Fealty, that's going to stack with your Rotting Fumes. That is super good. I, I, I saw that and I was like, this, this is awesome. I gotta get that. And then look at that, 28 Pierce Resistance to your pets. Really good. I, I think that that's... I've noticed a huge difference in survivability in my Skeletons and other pets ever since I've upped my Pierce Resistance, personally. So just wanted to share that that's awesome i found these boots here for a green i thought they were pretty phenomenal they give huge pierce bleed resist to me i kind of wish they gave some like health but they had a lot of armor so i took them for sure and then obviously the all damage and bleed resist to your pets super good i think for right now and it pushes my bleed resistance on my pets up to 80 right now which happens to be one of the damage types that just destroys the cabalist pets for some reason and then my pierce is 46 i'll talk about that here in a second same gloves same shoulders, really good shoulders. Effectively, a huge HP increase whenever this procs and puts a shield on you and your pets. All right, so Mythical Reaper of the Accurse. This is a new item that I did find. And again, it's giving your pets huge crit damage. All damage, elemental resist, which isn't bad. But it gives your Call of the Grave, which is the Necromancer buff that I was mentioning earlier. It gives your ne the pets the health regeneration. It gives your Call of the Grave 100 offensive ability. So when you activate that, this is also giving your pets 100 increased off offensive ability. Super good. With all the defensive ability shred, and then Blood of Dree given offensive ability, that's giving offensive ability. Really, really good item, and I'm glad that I found this. It's fantastic. And then the special effect on this is really cool, Defy Death, and it quite literally is self-explanatory. So when something hits me that would otherwise kill me, instead of killing me, it restores my health and gives me damage absorption for a short time and keeps me alive. 100 second cooldown on that, but still, it's really nice. It has saved me a few times. Wild Pact Emeralds, I think they're really good. They give good resistances, good stats. Absolutely love them. Sovereign Ruby Domination, and Mythical Crown of Command. So I do have some other things I want to play around with here. Got Mythical Corruptor's Mask. I actually have the Mythical Corruptor's uh, set, the entire set, and I kind of want to mess around with it see what I can do with that. Found these shoulders here. I do have these boots that have Aether Chaos Resistance. Obviously, if I'm going to go do Bastion of Chaos or... Port Volberry, you know, I can put these on and kind of maximize the Aether and Chaos Resistance on my pets, as well as these boots do give a 5% health increase. So that's kind of cool. The other boots don't. Okay, so let's go over Devotion. I believe that covers all of that. Like I said, Devotion is not finalized. I'm just picking up and using what I need. All right, so I have three points here, and that was simply just to maximize the points that I needed to grab Dying God. Obviously, Hungering Void, Dying God, 
is really good. Gives your pets huge crit, which we've discussed before. A lot of good stats from this. Flame Torrent is a must. You have to take Flame Torrent if you want this build to wreck everything, like I was saying. Lizard, Ill, Panther for the offensive ability. I took the Staff of Ratosh. This Staff is actually really good, and I've always liked this Staff, to be honest. You get 8th resistance for you and your pets. Um, you get all damage. And then this is really big for pets. You get crit damage again, as well as offensive ability, so you definitely want to grab that. And then you get some much needed vitality resist with percent health increase for you and your pets, which is pretty cool. Alright, so something that I picked up was Twin Fang. I was really skeptical of this, and somebody on the Grim Dawn forums was talking to me, like what they use and so on and so forth. And I was really like, I don't know if this is going to be good, because in this game it's kind of hard to understand how, like, damage procs work or what they're going to be proccing from. So anyway, you put this on your Blight Fiend and he'll just spit these fangs and it's a 20% chance on attack. But because he has a little poison aura, it happens quite a bit and the damage on it is actually really good. I was really surprised, but of course it's because you have main hand damage on that. So any skill that has main hand damage I've noticed is really strong and that's kind of what you want to focus on. Same thing here. I picked up Elder's Fire and put that on my Hellhound. So this ability here does fire and chaos damage. Obviously with the Hellhound Hellfire buff, like I was talking about earlier, this is going to boost this damage, which is really nice. And it puts a nasty debuff on enemies. It drops their fire, chaos, resistance, and their movement speed. So your Hellhound is doing like a little AoE fire thing, and he procs that too, which is really cool. Obviously max out Shepherd's Call. You definitely want that huge damage and crit buff. I put two points into Empty Throne for the stun reduction because honestly it's hard to pick up on this build right now and I'm trying to get it where I can. You want stun reduction because it can kill you if you don't have some. And then I picked up one point here for the pierce resistance for pets. One point here for pierce resistance for pets. I took three points into the Bismil's Bonds and I know that this pet is garbage. I was fully aware of that before anybody said anything to me. I don't really care for that pet. Um, but I took this for the vitality resistance for me and my pets on top of the Staff of Ratage. Because I did try out I did try out uh, the Revenants with the raised dead skeletons. Those skeletons are okay. Maybe if they scaled higher they wouldn't be too bad. I only got the 7. It was alright. But over here you do get vitality resistance and I'm trying to make up for that so that's why I grabbed that. And then uh, you get some other stuff too. 10% less damage from undead which is not bad. Damage reduction against undead is really nice. Get some health. And um, this one here is not bad either. Your pets get life still basically with that. I just hate that there's no like damage pet increase that's on the revenant, so it's kind of like meh. Three points into the giant's blood. Okay, so that's obviously for the health regeneration and survivability. Like I said, this is working out pretty good for me right now. It'll probably change based on what I find. So let's go over some of the stuff I was talking about before. So pull out the blight pin here, and on these test dummies. You can see his little Poison Nova. See how his Poison Nova is proccing the Twin Fang? And the Twin Fang's critting for like 4 to 5k, and that's without any additional buffs or anything. I was really surprised. I was like, that's kind of crazy for a static ability that's just, you know, spitting and hitting enemies. So that's actually not bad. That's actually pretty good. So let's go over to the Hellhound. Same concept. So he's got Eldritch. He's got the Eldritch Fire on him. I believe... Does he have to attack? He might have to attack. I thought he had a little fire aura. Maybe he doesn't. So maybe he has to attack things. There it is right there. Procced. Alright, so... That's the Hellfire, or the Elder's Fire buff, which you saw it was critting for like 6 to 7k. So he actually, he actually has to hit something. But, that's pretty cool because that will actually spread like a curse to all, en all enemies in the area. And you can see the dot damage from that's about six, you know, six to seven k. And again, this is without any percent damage increases on pets or buffs or anything. And then we have our skeletons, which, as you know, these big tanky like melee skeletons here, they have a vitality aura around them. So when they're near anything, they proc flame torn, which you can see proccing. And again, this is without any active buffs running or anything. And this damage gets insanely good when you have all your pet damage increase and all your buffs going. But I mean, yeah. So just inherently this build has nasty massive AoE, which in turn turns into like insanely good single target damage too. It's kind of kind of absurd. So um let's go kill something. I'll give you guys a good example of what kind of damage you can do with this build. 
Now, I would highly recommend and suggest putting a pet command somewhere on your bar. I have mine on right click. That was also suggested to me on the forums. Somebody was like, yeah, dude, with this build you want on right click. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I tried it out. And it is really good. So definitely want to do that. Let's go, um, we'll just go fight the warden. That's not the one I wanted. All right, so something that is really nice about this build, if you're playing solo and you're trying to basically loot farm, legendary farm, realistically, you want to just run past everything that is not a heroic name or a mini boss or a boss of any kind. Because killing trash is going to be a... Oh, that is... Okay, Nemesis boss, let's do this. Let's see how this goes. And he's getting ripped up a bit. So you want to put your skeletons right next to him, like I was saying before. So this is kind of cool, because <laughs> this name is this boss you actually have a really good chance against because my hit resistance is hella good. But anyway, that was a Nemesis boss right there. That was kind of cool to show you guys that. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, that's a Nemesis boss. Um, but yeah, there's a Nemesis boss. There's one. Now, if that was the Beast Nemesis boss, that would have been a much different story, I, I assure you. Keep in mind, a majority of that fight was without me running up and proccing my Shepherd's Call with my uh, Bone Harvester, because I didn't want to get close to that guy, just in case. <laughs> I, I actually haven't encountered him yet, so I was like, I don't know how this is going to go. I'm kind of surprised he didn't kill any of my skeletons, to be honest. Didn't get anything super good off him, I don't think. Should have got his shoulders, I believe. Yeah, they, they are right there. They're not bad. Not bad. So the Nemesis bosses can drop uh, unique names, shoulders. And they can roll pretty good sometimes. That was kind of cool. That was kind of cool to run into that guy. I'm going to go ahead and kill these. I always collect the Aether Crystals every time I come through. So you see what I'm doing? I'm positioning all my pets. See, if I keep right-clicking, they won't move. And then all the auras and stuff will proc. But obviously, if you let them go and let them attack the target, they're going to do a lot more damage. See, as you can see, they just nuke it. All right. And he's dead. All right. So next, <laughs> next wave. <laughs> And there you go. Okay, so, as you can see, damage on this build is nuts. I mean, I tried to play on another character earlier. And don't get me wrong, my Conjurer can still, you know, rip things up, single target and stuff. I made a video of, you know, my Conjurer killing Mad Queen. And I think it took, like, 14, 15 seconds, somewhere around there. Which is still really good for somebody who is who is as tanky as my Conjurer is. But this build is kind of crazy. And I'm really surprised that the damage is what it is. And like I said, I don't know if they'll nerf it, but until then, wee! <laughs> yeah, enjoy the build. As always, guys, thank you for taking the time to watch my content. I really do appreciate it. Uh, everybody who's commented and asked questions, I try to answer all of your questions. So if I don't answer your question, and I and if I don't answer it right away, if it's been like a week or so or a couple days and I don't answer your question, hit me up again. Let me know because, you know, I try to answer everybody's question, but I kind of get busy. As always, thank you, for thank you for taking time to watch my videos. If you like, please comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.